does fire benefit wildlife? And what do animals actually do during a burn? Let's find out. Here in the southeastern U.S., fire has been an important disturbance in shaping our natural landscapes. And much of our native flora and fauna have developed dynamic evolutionary relationships with fire-related disturbance. This longleaf pine community is also one of the most biologically significant regions in the world. And included among this incredible diversity of life are unique and wonderful specialist snake species that can only be found in systems which are managed with frequent fire. Unfortunately, about 90% of these specialist snakes are classified as in need of conservation action due to population declines. In this video, we explore the significance of fire to three of these specialist snakes, the Eastern Coach Whip, the Southern Hognose Snake, and the Northern Pine Snake. Now, Coach Whip snakes are an actively foraging diurnal species whose physiology is somewhat reminiscent of the far more generalistic and widely distributed racer snake. But Coach Whips are not exactly the same as racers because these are actually a pretty specialized species, both in terms of their habitat and thermoregulatory preferences. Coach Whips favor a open canopied woodland condition with a rich herbaceous understory, usually exceeding 12 inches in height. And that is exactly where we found this individual. Now the benefit of that rich herbaceous layer is twofold for Coach Whips. For one thing, those herbs are providing cover from predators. And because Coach Whips have extremely large home ranges, and are far more active above ground than many other snakes, avian predation is a huge risk for them. And that herbaceous vegetation likely mitigates some of that risk for coach whips. The other benefit of the kind of annual fire regime that promotes herbaceous vegetation is that it also benefits coach whips in the form of prey provisioning. So coach whips feed primarily on lizards. And in some parts of their range, they are especially dependent on six-lined race runners. And that is a species that's known to achieve peak abundance in sites that are burned annually. So effective coach whip conservation relies on frequent burning, ideally annual burning, to promote the vegetative conditions that these snakes select for. This is a really gorgeous individual as well. I have never before seen an individual with that kind of distinctively black head. And there's even some orange and red coming in right there on that first third of the body. I mean, this is just a gorgeous snake, really healthy, absolutely glistening in the sunlight, obviously eating well. And this right here is an area that is managed for frequent fire to promote this herbaceous vegetation. So obviously it's working for this individual. But let's keep searching for the rest of this amazing specialist snake community. The southern hognose snake is the smallest member of its genus and is both uncommon and declining throughout its range. Combined with their cryptic behavior, this species can be extremely difficult to study. And in fact, I could not find a single peer-reviewed publication diving into the fine-scale spatial ecology of this species. So instead of directly talking about the benefits of fire for southern hognose snakes, I'll instead be extrapolating what we do know about the species to make inferences regarding its relationship with fire. The historical distribution of this species approximately mirrors the distribution of longleaf pine savanna, and all contemporary population strongholds of southern hognose snakes occur in areas that are managed using frequent fire. Part of the benefit of fire to southern hognose snakes is in the form of prey provisioning. This is a dietary specialist which primarily preys on amphibians and in particular toads. The spadefoot toad is widely agreed to make up the majority of the diet of southern hognose snakes. In spadefoot toads, in addition to the other anurans that southern hognose snakes consume, the ephemeral wetlands that those amphibians are using to breed will actually decline in quality without fire during the dry season. Because what happens is you might get woody encroachment into that wetland without consistent fire, and those trees will actually alter the natural hydrologic regime and make it unsuitable breeding habitat for the amphibians that southern hognose snakes depend on for food. So while we are not sure of the direct impacts of fire on this species, what we do know is that frequent fire is critically important for maintaining the amphibian populations that southern hognose snakes depend on for survival. Finally, let's investigate the importance of fire to the pine snake. Although the cryptic behaviors and narrow habitat preferences of these snakes makes them extremely difficult to encounter in the wild, we have a special opportunity to head out into the field with herpetologist Jeff Bean to try and encounter some of these animals in a frequently burned longleaf system. Now, how often do you normally observe them on the surface when you're tracking them? You know, during, during the warm season, maybe half the time, but counting, you know, tracking them during cold weather, it's, it's not more than 20-30% of the time probably. This single aspect of their ecology has tremendous implications for the relationship with fire. 
because fire both directly and indirectly increases the structural complexity of the forest floor and provides pine snake refugia. By burning out the tap roots of longleaf pine trees, fire creates underground channels within which large-bodied snakes may temporarily shelter or even overwinter. Must be a hole there somewhere. And are stump holes the most common type of refugia they're using here? Yeah, out when they're out in the woods like this, yeah. They use mammal burrows, cotton rat burrows, and things like that a lot, and mole runs. But they use these root channels from these old stumps a lot. Besides these direct benefits, fire also promotes the vegetative condition that is favored by keystone mammal species. Small mammals not only make up the majority of the pine snake's diet, they also create deep burrow networks, which are utilized by pine snakes. See that stick that runs across there? If it just beyond it, you can see some spur. I don't, I can't even see him. I'm standing right here. That's how hard to see they are. That's crazy. He's a big snake too. Wait, oh, oh my gosh, I can actually see scales. <laughs> wow. How is he? Oh, oh my gosh. That's crazy. Hey. <laughs> If he finds a hole or if he, he's going to go all the way back to where he came from. There's no way that I would have been able to see that snake if it was not pointed out to me. And it's also really interesting that this vegetation structure is actually exactly the kind of vegetation that's described in literature where pine snakes actually prefer thermoregulating in areas with pretty high shrub cover because it actually allows them to thermoregulate really effectively. Um, while moving very minimally. So they can put one or two coils in the sun, take them back out if they need to until they're reaching that thermal optimum. And then he just went right down into another hole that we didn't even see before. So yeah, this is like everything that pine snakes do, it just did. Additionally, pine snakes select for bare mineral soils when nesting, a condition which may only be made available after fire has consumed leaf litter and low-lying vegetation. The association between pine snakes and fire is so strong that in one study, over 90% of pine snake detections occurred in stands that had burned within the last two years. Although frequent prescribed burns impacts each of these three snake species in slightly different ways, frequent fire improves thermoregulatory heterogeneity, vegetative conditions, and prey communities favored by all of these specialist snake species. But you may be wondering what snakes actually do during a burn. Experts on fire think that a lot of these areas burned about every two or three years, and some of them may have burned you know, several years in a row. The thing out here is adapted to it. Sometimes a fire will kill an individual animal if it gets caught in it, but usually they are able to, to get away, uh, usually going in the ground. I've had pine snakes move out of an area after it burned, just go to the nearest non-burned area and hang out there for a while and then come back. I've had uh, fires burn right over southern hognose that were in the ground, and. Next day they'd be up on the top of the burned ground, they'd be doing fine. Coat swift's the same thing, they, they usually run from a fire, go underground. Overall, the benefits of frequent fire for these snakes far outweighs any potential risk. Here's your sneak peek at the species that will be featured in the next episode of The Wild Report. If you enjoyed meeting these fire adapted snakes, I think you'd really enjoy this video, which gives you a deeper look at the coach whip snake. Until next time, stay curious and keep adventuring everywhere. This has been Zeno of The Wild Report, signing out.